you have seen all of the interesting stuff this thing can do. And if you are interested trying this out, I'll be sharing to you five essential insights you need to know before you start. Okay, so this is not a thumb drive. Obviously, the T Dunkel S3 is an ESP32 microcontroller with an Extensa LX7 dual core CPU running at 240 MHz with an internal SRAM of 512KV. It also has a 16 MB flash storage for the firmware and it has some modules. And if you can look at this, it has a button module oops it has an OLED module like this and it has a CH9399329 module for the USB interface with an SD card reader inside what I'm trying to tell you is that this is a programmable microcomputer with different modules attached to it and this is not a simple USB storage device next thing that i want to discuss is how to transfer the scripts into this device as you can see after you flash the firmware into the t dangle and you insert the sd card in it the sd card now acts as a mounted mounted hard drive for the microcontroller inside and that's the reason why it will not work as an sd card reader when you try to plug it in into your computer now the easiest way is using an SD card reader like this. Attach it to the computer and transfer the scripts there. And another way is through the web UI under the file manager which will help you upload files into the SD card attached or inserted into this device. The next thing that I want to show you is the web UI. It is something that you can access when you're connecting to the Wi-Fi access point of the USB RB9. By default, the name of the access point is iPhone 14 and the password is password. Okay. So you go to http colon slash slash for the 3.2.1 colon 8080 and you will be greeted with this web UI. Now, in this web UI, on the dashboard, the initial page, you can see here that there is this recrawl.ds or the run script. All of the .ds script that is on the root of the SD card folder, you can see it here on the drop down and you can execute it remotely. Now, the settings here, you can change the name of the default access point its password, the device type. For example, on the example scripts in the GitHub, there's one uh, pickup capture attack. You need to change the device type there. Um, the VID and the PID is something that we will be using later when I will be showing you how to debug the agent and how you can install the agent manually. Okay, so that's all here commands okay you can run or execute a command meaning commands that you can find on the wiki on the github if you have an agent you can run normal um, bash commands dos command here and if you have and for the marauder yeah you can run all of the existing marauders here on the or esp32 marauder commands here on the drop down Okay. file browser this is what i'm showing you earlier um this is if you don't have an sd card this is a way for you to upload the files by clicking upload and you can manage the files that are on the sd card here okay. you can download for example the pickup files that you got um, you can delete, you can execute also um, some of the DS files that you have here. VNC, this is for example, you have um, already installed the agent. This is where you're going to see the sc screen capture 
that is being published by the agent. Lugs is obviously lugs, so if you want to debug some of the scripts that you have, this is where you're gonna see it. One of the more not so straightforward things to run in the example is the agent. So if you are having problems running the agent script, what you can do is you can just install it manually. Now, if you want to install it manually, you'll have to compile the agent project under tools. And after you have compiled it, as you can see here, .NET 8.0, Win64 under release, under publish, you will have the three DLLs that are needed. Okay, so you can have those three DLLs. You can go to your run window, which is Windows R. Okay. Put in update and it will show you the update. As you can see, I already have it here. Okay, now using your PowerShell, and in my case, that's the terminal here in my Visual Studio code. You can just clip it here and you can, it should be, let's be, do it like this so that we can see the logs after we run it. Okay, so there is the scheduled task security script and, as you can, and something that we can check out is that Windows R, let's go to the task scheduler and let's see if it is running. So there should be something like security script here. And what we can do is go to the properties and let's go check the actions. And as you can see, I have there my BID and the PID that I have captured on my web UI earlier. So by the way, um, on the script that I've run, I have manually put my BID and my PID in there. Okay. So now what's happening is since this task scheduler is running, that would be the agent. So I'll just right, right click and run this okay so it is now running the next thing we will do is we will gonna try to access it on the web ui and check if the agent is running now that i am connected with the access point again i can go to the web ui and as you can see the agent is now running because i have manually installed it and if you take a look at the BNC, let's click here. It is now connected and it should be showing, as you can see, the same, uh, it's like an inception, right? The same screen that we have here. This. This one works on your phone too. So this one, you'll just need an OTG cable, attach it to your phone like this, and you can attach it on the phone. Thank you. So, when it is attached, as you can see, light is on. This can act as a keyboard to control the phone, or you can use your phone to power up the T dongle or the USB ARM manager. By understanding these five points, you should be able to avoid a lot of the common headaches most people have when they are starting out using this T dongle USB or T dongle S3 with a USB ARM knife firmware. And if you run into any issues or have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Until next time, my fellow Hakista.